Does this look like 2007? There is PTSD that still affects home buyers today. The bubble of 2007 saw U.S. homeowners average gains of 70% over the previous eight years. The market had indeed taken a leave of the basics, and expectations of big future gains and fear of missing out on a big score were driving prices far beyond the property's underlying values. So where was the evidence? The extraordinary disconnect between home prices and rents. The problem arises when home prices misalign with rents, jumping so high that families can lease similar properties at monthly payments much lower than they would as owners. There's an interplay between rents and prices. When houses get too expensive, people rent, lifting rents and pushing down home prices until the balance is restored. Rents exercise a gravitational pull on prices, and price-to-rent ratios behave much like price-earning ratios for stocks. Prices may occasionally jump way ahead of rents, but then the reverse happens. Prices slow or drop and rents catch up, restoring the equilibrium between the two. So why might it be different this time? Put simply, the basics of supply and demand are lifting rents and prices in tandem in many hot markets. In the bubble, speculation powered the market. The view that housing promised huge gains lured investors to buy bunches of homes that they put up for rent in turn depressing the fundamental force that drives home prices. That's far from the case today. Families are buying houses to live in, not to trade. Most owners aren't holding or getting risky loans. They typically enjoy big equity cushions courtesy of the run-up. Buying should remain strong for two reasons. First, although 30-year home loan rates have risen from 3.5% at the start of the year to 5.1% this April, borrowers are still getting a great deal. It would take a mortgage rate of over 7% to significantly slow down demand. And let's not forget that in Miami, 40% of our deals are in cash. Second, the work-from-home economy is allowing people who've been stuck in suburbs of major cities to relocate where housing prices are much lower. By making the move, they can buy a much bigger home and still pocket hundreds of thousands in cash from the trade. This migration is raising prices at the high end in the Sun Belt cities, which are mid-priced compared to neighborhoods in LA, Boston, or Washington. As for supply, the volume of homes for sale today stands at by far the lowest levels in half a century. The current inventory of 890,000 family units is around one-third the figure of 2.5 million units in 2006. New construction is lagging sales by a wide margin nationwide. The increase in stock of new homes can only go up so fast. New construction isn't keeping pace with demand and shows no signs of doing so. To add fuel to the fire, we're seeing seniors staying put instead of the old pattern of selling and moving to rentals or condos, putting more pressure on supply. All told, the forecast is that prices will rise at least 17% for all of 2022 and gain another 11-12% to 12 next year, assuming mortgage rates don't take a gigantic increase. And rents are predicted to keep almost the same pace as prices in strong markets. Here's the deal. We're talking about a pretty healthy market overall, but we're still seeing a pattern of some winners and losers. The housing market is on solid ground. Its foundation is intact. The problem for America is that symbolic dwelling is a lot more expensive than it was a few years ago.